How do we recreate a traditional trade? Rudy Christian and Laura Sager interviewed in the vicinity of Orgreese Pond by Ken Follett, May 31st, 2014. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. Good. Okay. That'll work. <laughs> so, because I know we created tradespeople through the Shaker workshop. I think what we actually did with the Shaker Workshop is that we supported the creation of tradespeople. I'm not sure that we actually did create tradespeople because we have not followed up on those people to see if any of them are working in the trade. Well, you know James is. But he you already he already is. was in that he already was in that heading in that path. We know Julia is. Right. Well, I'm saying is those people were already had been set on that path by someone else. Besides us, or the world diamonds. That's all. They they already were on that path. We didn't divert them to that path through World Monuments Fund effort. Okay, we didn't divert them, but we encouraged yeah. and supported. We support. Enabled. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's an important part of it. I think that uh, that's that one of the things that makes a difference is if you do decide to go into the trades, or you think it might be a good idea. I think a support network is an important part of that, and I think that's one of the things that we tried to create with PTN was a support network for people that had made the decision to move from wherever they were into the trades, right. because then you weren't alone. Right. You know, and well, it wasn't solely a support network for those who would want to move into, but for those who existed in it, right? Already, yeah, yeah, and yeah. for them to be able to recognize and see each other. Right. Exactly. Right. And that, that model had already worked with the Timber Framers Guild. Yeah, or and, was and working. And continues to work. Yeah, was working. And, and I, think that that's, I think that that's an important um, differentiation because enabling has various forms when it comes to trying to change how things work. And if what you see isn't working the way you think it needs to work, do you try to enable that by just making something happen or do you try to figure out what already is happening that will end up changing things and support that both yeah, yeah. and i think that i think that's just where we were and are with with ptn i don't think we're actually taking people and pulling them out of nowhere and plugging them into the trades but i think what we are doing with ptn is we're helping people who have realized, you know, there's something about this that I like, be encouraged by the fact that they're not the only ones that feel that way. Right. There's other people that feel that way. Connectivity. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that that's, that's a real important part of it because I mean, that's, that's why I come back, when I come back, is because I don't feel as though when I'm there, I am somehow or other being um, an influence as much as being um, a, a part of something. I'm, I'm being part of an effort that is beyond my own efforts. So it isn't about changing just myself anymore. It's about changing more than myself. You know? And that's, that's part of what makes me want to stay doing what I do is that I think it's really important, and I talk about this a lot, and you know that. It's just, you know, I talk about the fact that if we can't get more than just ourselves to feel differently, if we can't get the people who are not necessarily ever going to go in that direction to feel differently, we really haven't accomplished much. And that goes directly to what you're talking about, which is the visibility factor, you know. It's, it's a whole different thing to see someone doing something than to actually be doing it yourself. And doing it yourself, you can absorb the feeling of it. You know, you can, you know, you get your hands in the mortar, you get your hands, you get your hands on the chisel or whatever. You can feel what's happening to you and it means something. But the people who aren't actually touching the mortar, actually aren't picking up the chisel and the mallet, the, those people, they need to vicariously realize what happens when we do do that because that's what's going to make the difference between 
going to Walmart to get it and coming to us to get it. That's what, ha what, what does happen. What happens is you begin to assimilate the difference between something that is made to be an expression of your skills and something that is produced to create a profit for an investor. And this is where I think we have seen a real breakdown in our, our social structure because we've allowed, and I know you don't feel the way I do about capitalism and I, and I appreciate that. Well, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a, no, I, I do feel the same way as you do about the qualities that you're expressing. What, where I have a difference is my understanding of what capitalism is. Right, right, and that, and I, and that, that's that's a really really good discussion. But from <clears> my <throat> perspective, what I'm looking at is what it means to us, the person who is trying to express themselves. Um, when you when you watch Antiques Roadshow, a lot of the things that people on Antiques Roadshow are buying. They're buying because of the exquisiteness of them in their uniqueness. And it all too often, if you pay attention, goes to the fact that it was created by someone of a high level of skill. They made this special thing. And now it has become valuable because they made it and it survived. Okay. Well, that's what tradespeople do by nature. That's how we, how we gain the satisfaction of getting up in the morning and doing our job. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. But you can't take <clears throat> a small building or a stone wall or a marble monument to Antiques Roadshow and have it appreciated that right. way. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a really good point because most yeah, we, we, which goes back to uh, from BP that uh, histor history only can happen along the roadway. Wherever the road goes to, that's where the history must have occurred. The billboards. Well, if the road doesn't go up to that spot, then right. no history then must no have history. occurred there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So because the Google, we, Google, we can't we can't see it. If the Google car can't get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. Going off but it's the hat, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's but I think it is because it's the reality is that when you want to get up in the morning and go do something. You need some kind of motivation to do that. You need to feel like it's worth it to you to get up and go do that, okay? If it's because you have to pay your bills and you're trying to figure out some way to earn the money to pay your bills, it becomes um, the kind of work that we wish we didn't have to do. But if it involves getting up in the morning and going out and taking on the challenge of creating something that you know you can do and you know people are going to appreciate they're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to want either for you to do that for them or they're going to want to buy what you just did because of you being part of it your ability to make that happen, your skills become embedded in it. They become part of the character of it. Then it has a different value. And that value isn't about paying your bills. It isn't about being able to go out and earn a paycheck by scalping someone on some kind of a drug deal or whatever. It's, it's about being able to use your hands connected to your mind to manipulate the environment that you're in, the physical environment, whether it's stone, whether it's wood, whether it's plaster, lime, glass. sand, glass, whatever, right, in a way that when you're done, part of you is in there. That's something that gives it character. And you so so it's, 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 oh, I'm sorry. So it's not simply a, a case of embodied energy. It's a case of embodied spirit. I think that's really, really close to what I'm talking about. It's and I don't know. How do you feel about it? 
I, I tend to look at things that are built and not be able to not think about who did that. <clears throat> things don't just appear. Cabinets, buildings, monuments, even, even small things like hardware. I, I look at tiny things and all of those things, if they're old enough, were made by hand by someone and you cannot help but think about how that might have happened, what tools were used, how long did it take, where did they work? Were they working outside under a tree in the yard? Were they, you know, pounding away on an anvil in a shop? You, I, it goes back to your boots of the builder and it's, it's every kind of building or fabricating or making. Somebody stood there and did that. And I tend to think of those people because, because I do that. I can do some of those things. I know what effort goes into it and what mental ability you need to have. And the sensitivity that you need to have to shape and form. So, so real, realistically, what we're talking about here is something that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with how it works on an immediate level. I mean, you can go out and you can buy something at Walmart or wherever that's going to do what you need to have done, and you could go out to buy it from a tradesperson who is highly skilled, who can make that thing, and it will do what it needs to be done. And the question to you, and, and I think this is something that I also very much appreciate, really has less to do with whether it's well made or not, but whether you feel as though somehow you can connect to who made it, right. where it came from. Right. What it is. Right. right. And, and from my perspective, I connect that to the fact that those things do have a tendency to be something that we will be living with farther in the future. Because those are the things that are going to be made to last. And they weren't necessarily made to last because that was the goal as much as it's the result. If you make it well by hand, if you make it well as a tradesperson, what you have actually created is something that has more longevity. And I think it's because of the nature of the process. Because you understand whether or not it makes sense to use this piece of stone versus that piece of stone, this mix of mortar versus that mix of mortar, this piece of wood versus that piece of wood, and those are all things that get lost when you become a society that is consuming things that are manufactured by a manufacturing process that is almost completely machine or computer-based instead of human-based. And so whether or not it's intentional, how well it serves its purpose for how long actually is affected by the difference in the process. So you're making things that actually work better, whether you intentionally are doing it for that reason or not, because of the knowledge that you incorporate into the process. Right. There's durability built in, but I think the things that really last are those that are respected, and a lot of the respect yep. that those items attain is based on the spirit and the soul that's put into them in the first place. Yeah, that's a good point. 